Hello and welcome to this incredibly expensively produced video tutorial on Ernest Hemingway's short story Hills Like White Elephants published in 1927. We're going to go through and do a little bit of visualization of the action and the symbolism and the characters in this short story to give you an idea of what a close reading of a piece of literature can give you in terms of um, illuminating some of the deeper meanings inside of a story. Uh, anybody can do this. It's not a difficult process. You don't have to be a genius or a PhD to analyze a piece of literature this way. You just have to take a little bit of time and read the piece a few times. Use your imagination, use some creativity, um, and you can uncover some um, little hidden Easter eggs in a in and pieces of literature that you read. And in Hills Like White Elephants, there are quite a few. Hemingway said that he wanted his short stories to be like an iceberg, um, where 10% of the action is above the surface, and the other 90% the reader has to imagine uh, that it's below the surface. He has a very sparse language style, and uh, some readers like that, some readers absolutely hate it. Um, I happen to like it myself. I like using my imagination. You may or may not agree. But let's take a look at the uh, action of the story. First of all, the story takes place in Spain. Um, here's a beautifully drawn map of Spain uh, over here, and this is where the main action takes place. On the east coast of Spain is Barcelona. Uh, in the middle part of Spain is Madrid. And running through uh, between them is is the river Ebro, which is mentioned in the story. The characters in the story are on a train moving uh, from Barcelona to Madrid, and they've stopped at a train station and are having some drinks at a bar uh, next to the next to the Ebro. Um, so this, I'll say first that because of Hemingway's very sparse language and style, a lot of this is my interpretation of what I think the action is is taking place inside of the story. You may have some separate interpretations and you may choose to write an essay in which you have a different interpretation of the story and that's totally fine. I think that uh, Hemingway would be very happy about that because I think one of the reasons he leaves so much to the imagination is to allow different interpretations on the reader's part. Um, anyway, if you've read the story and you should have read it already before you watch this video, you'll notice that there they, there are two characters, and they're sitting in a bar. There is a girl named Jig. That's a girl. And there's an American man whose name we don't ever get. And they're sitting outside of a bar between two train tracks, having some beers as they're waiting on uh, the express train to Madrid to come. Um... They never mention what they're discussing in the story, though. They're having a conflict, and they're trying to make a decision about something. They never say it out loud. You may have guessed what the conflict is, but uh, if you didn't, I'll tell you that they're discussing a potential abortion that uh, uh, the, the girl Jig is, is going to have, and they're discussing whether or not they're going to go through with it. Um, so that's the conflict. And much of the story is left up to the reader's interpretation as to whether or not they're actually going to go through with the decision. So I'm going to talk a little bit about in this video how they, whether or not they came to the decision to get the abortion or not. Again, you may agree or disagree, but that's kind of where we're going to get to. We're going to look at the symbolism that Hemingway lays out in order to uh, maybe make that decision as to as to what they decided. Okay, so we have them sitting outside of a little bar having a few drinks. Some students say that the very fact that they're drinking and she continues to drink is an indication that she's made up her mind that she is going to have the abortion because why would someone continue drinking if they were, uh, if they were pregnant and they were going to keep the pregnancy? But we have to remember that this story was written in 1927 and really the idea of uh, you know, fetal alcohol syndrome and research into fetal alcohol syndrome didn't come around until much later in the 20th century. Back at this time, we can't say uh, with any certainty that, that that's an indication that she maybe has made up her mind not to have the abortion. And in fact, you may get the feeling from looking at these two characters and from reading about her that she doesn't want to have the abortion at all and that the American man is trying to talk her into having it. Um, 
But what we do know about Spain in 1927 is that it's a very Catholic country. Abortion is by no means legal. And probably what's happened is that these two characters have been traveling around a bit. Um, she's gotten into trouble with the pregnancy. They're coming from Barcelona to Madrid, which is probably, you know, it's the big city in Spain. It's probably the only place that they can get an illegal abortion. Um, so let's look at a few little of these Easter eggs that Hemingway puts in there. The first is the title, Hills Like White Elephants. Um, a lot of students say that there's some symbolism with the term white elephants in terms of an elephant in the room, something that the characters don't want to discuss, but they both know is there, and that could possibly be. There's another bit of symbolism uh, with a white elephant, and that goes back to um, an old uh, legend from Siam or Thailand, where if a uh, the royalty in Thailand had a, a a person in their court who was annoying them and obnoxious, they would give this person an albino elephant, which is very difficult to take care of, uh, and that would keep the the uh, obnoxious courtier busy enough to not bother the king. You may have gone to a white elephant gift exchange, and a white elephant gift exchange. Is, you'll know you'll, you kind of get presents that you don't really want. A white elephant is uh, anything that's a, a, a gift. So it, it's something of such value that it's really a burden on the um, holder of, of the gift. And you may see some reflections in that in their situation that they're about to have this gift of a baby that may be actually more of a burden uh, than it is any type of a reward. Okay. So... Again, this is kind of how I visualize the action, that, they, that the uh, American man and Jig are sitting outside of this bar between two tracks. Hemingway says on one side of the tracks, uh, the, the earth is very dry and hot, and there are hills, white hills out there that, uh, that Jig says look like white elephants. He says on the other side is the, is the Ebro, and on this side, everything is, is green and lush. There are trees and fields of grain, and off in the distance are the mountains. So you might start to get... The impression that there is some symbolism going on here with relation to the decision that they're making. They're trying to decide whether to go through with the pregnancy or not. And we have one side that's real dry and barren over here. And we have one side that's lush and fertile on the other side. Okay, So that's some symbolism that Hemingway puts in there that's pretty deliberate um, and may give us some signals as to which which direction they eventually decide in their decision-making process, especially if we think in terms of the tracks and the trains that are running and which direction they're going. So we know that if they continue on to Madrid, that they're probably going to get the abortion. Madrid is where they're going to get the abortion. We know that if they go back to Barcelona, that they've probably decided against getting the abortion and they've gone back. Now, this is a very tricky part. And again, that sparse language and style that Hemingway has uh, prevents us from knowing exactly for certain whether or not they've gone through with it at the end. Um, there's one small line toward the end. We know a decision has been made. They have their bags somewhere up against the wall of the station. And... Hemingway says that the man picks up their bags and carries them over to the other side. Now, I envision this, that they decide against the abortion, and he takes these over here, takes their bags over there, because they're going to take the train back to Barcelona. They've decided against it. But the fact is, Hemingway doesn't really tell us with any certainty which direction the trains are going. These could be backwards, and the train could be going back this way, um, and this one could be going this direction. That might be your interpretation. This is the way that I interpret it. Okay. Um, so when I read this story, I interpret it that they've decided at the end that they're not going to go through with the abortion and, and they go back. But there's a lot of evidence uh, throughout the story that they decide to go through with it. And you might want to argue a different method. The last thing I'm going to talk about here is the issue of time. Now, if you look at the, in the first paragraph of the story, uh, we have this little quote, this from the very first, from the very first paragraph. Um, it's the last two sentences in that first paragraph. It says, it was very hot and the express from Barcelona would come in 40 minutes. It stopped at this junction for two minutes and then went on to Madrid. So we know that the train to Madrid is, is coming in 40 minutes. 
Here's my little clock here. And if you actually went through and read this story out loud, there's really only about six or seven minutes of dialogue that's in this story. Um, so let's say we have 33 minutes that are unaccounted for in the story uh, by the end when the, tra when the train actually does come. The barmaid at the end says you have five minutes until the train and we'll assume that the story ends right before the train arrives. So we have about seven minutes of dialogue. We know that the whole action of the story takes place over about 40 minutes. What's happening in that other 33 minutes? Um, and that's a real a real nice little subtle gesture by Hemingway to say, to make you to make you think about what the characters are doing, and they're sitting in awkward silence throughout much of that time. So almost all of the all of the time spent between these two characters isn't them talking, but it's more them sitting in silence, thinking. Jig looking out at the at the uh, both sides of the, the geography on both sides of the tracks, each of them thinking and stuff like that. So anyway, these are some little hidden hidden uh, Easter eggs that can come out when you when you take the time to sit down and really visualize and think about a story. Um, and I hope that you get some enjoyment out of this too, because that's the main purpose of literature.